Hello, this is Roland. I wanted to stop by to make a short video just to tell you what I'm up to these days and to talk about our response to stress. First, the most important, which is talking about stress. Stress, one way of looking at stress is that it's, it's something that calls upon you, something that beckons you, something that wants to elicit a response from you. And so, if you have food in your tummy, then it elicits digestion. If uh, the sun is bright, it elicits uh, maybe putting on your sunglasses or shading your eyes. You see what I mean? So those are appropriate responses and natural ones. Another way of looking at stress is but let me mention right away that there are unnatural responses. Unnatural responses. So, for example, if something calls upon you to perform some work or some activity and you become angry, do you see now that that, that has elicited an improper response? It's not the fault of the thing itself or the person, him or herself. It's your response that was faulty. But there can also be stressors that are inappropriate, something that is, um, that is seductive or teasing or something cruel. Do you see how seduction, tease, or cruelty, or unfairness, do you see how those are unnatural stresses, temptations, unnatural things that are, that are eliciting a response from you? Do you see that? All right. And probably you can also see that there are different responses possible. If someone is cruel, you can become angry and hate them. Or if someone is cruel, you can see that they're cruel and respond appropriately, but without anger, without resentment. Do you see that? If your child comes to you with a question, and often, often children come, or your family, someone in your family comes with a demand, it's more like a demand. So you can resent the demand. Do you see what I mean? Or get angry at it. Or you can quite calmly note the, the demand and then respond appropriately. Maybe by doing something or saying something. You see, do you understand? In other words, you're responding with patience. And while I'm on the subject, let me just mention that our loved ones often tease us. All right, I said the tease is unnatural, but it's kind of an innocent unnatural. Your family teases you, but what are they teasing for? They're teasing for love. They want love. So they come to you with something, and if you respond patiently, then what? They feel secure, don't they? But if you respond with anger, with resentment, with hostility, with Blame. You see what I mean? All right. So we're talking about stresses. Now, early in life, there are natural stresses that we that we need to, to grow. We children actually need stresses, and and to, and they actually need little teases, little you know harmless teases. It helps their egos to grow, and the, and the natural stresses, the sun, the wind, the rain, climbing and jumping and bike riding and all of those uh, activities, stress their body to grow to grow strong. You see, later in life, we still need such natural stresses, don't we? For example, we know that if somebody is bedridden for quite a while, even for a short amount of time, someone who's bedridden begins to grow weak very quickly. And when they get up out of bed, it's hard for them to walk. And then it takes a while, take, maybe take a few days or a month, or, or who knows how long it might take for them to regain their strength. You see what I mean? And how do they regain their strength? By using their muscles, by actually walking and doing things. So, now you see what stresses are. Now, it depends on how you respond to stresses. So, let me take it to a, a, another level. There are unnatural stresses. Well, they're natural in as much as they're of the natural world, but they're unnatural in that there are stresses like, uh, that cause diseases unnatural stresses, or for example, different viruses and so on, or toxins in the environment. That's right, toxins in the environment, smoke in the air and 
chemicals in the food, in the soil, and so on and so forth. Now, those things also elicit a response, don't they? And there are appropriate responses. But if our response becomes overboard, in other words, if we respond with too extremely, then it can lead to what? It can lead to an overreaction in the body, like, a, like an allergy, for example. And then there are natural stresses that there's nothing harmful about them, a little pollen in the air, for example. But if your body reacts to those natural stresses, overreacts to them, then you begin to have asthma or allergies, for example. See, asthma or allergies. If you respond to something in, in the environment inappropriately, and then it, it becomes an established pattern. Now, if you start to think about it, what would be the appropriate response to a little bit of pollen in the air? The appropriate response would be no response. No response at all. It's like if you get some dust, if you get a little dust on yourself, no response at all. But if you respond to it with inflammation, with various bodily changes, like occur in, in when we get allergies, then those unnatural responses then become harmful. It's the response itself that's harmful. So I think I've made my point. So I want you to see that there are natural responses and those we can't help and those we even need. But just don't over-respond. Don't overreact. Keep it natural. If there's, if there's a little sun in your eyes, okay, then shade your eyes. But don't resent the sun. See what I mean? If you have a little work to do, extra work. The boss comes with extra work at the last minute on Friday afternoon. Well, all right. If, if it needs to be done, then then do the work. Don't resent it. Don't resent the work. Don't resent the boss. Don't become angry. Do you see how those are responses that turns the natural into unnatural? Now, let's take work, for example. I said that you can think of stress as something that's eliciting, eliciting or demanding. All right, so there's work Let's say, that you have to do. But have you ever noticed that if you do your work properly, it's, and if it's good work, it's honest work, especially work with your hands, when you're done, you feel better. You have a, a sense of accomplishment, and you feel good afterwards, don't you? Well, that's a good result of having done your work properly. But if you resent your work, if you're angry at your work, if you're angry at the person who asked you to do it, then can you see that afterwards you not only don't feel good, you might even feel bad. And is it possible, I mean, I'm just throwing something out here, for to be pondered, is it possible that the wrong response, in other words, resentment and anger, is it possible that that could open the door to damage to the body, that over the long run, a life of working resentfully, or a lifetime of abusing one's body could result in, in some sort of a physical impairment of the joints or something, is that possible? Well, so now do you see it's important to keep it natural? not to add it, the unnatural reaction. And then when there are unnatural stresses, like teasing, for example, or unnatural challenges, trying to seduce you, trying to tease you into, into achieving or into doing. See what I mean? It's one thing to be industrious. It's another thing to be ambitious. And the movers and shakers and all the powers that be and all the teachers and so on, who then themselves were, were tempted to be ambitious, they turn around and do it to you, and then they tempt you to study ambitiously. See, can you see that it's okay to study in moderation? Although myself, I really don't study. I scan things slightly. But the point I'm getting at is when you're a kid, all right, you have to learn certain things. It's okay to study, but don't study angrily. Don't study ambitiously. You see what I mean? Don't study to please the teacher. Don't study to, to get over on your on your fellow students. Don't study to... Get a good job so you can throw it in their face. See what I mean? And be prideful. Don't do it pridefully, angrily, resentfully. Just do it simply. If you have something to do, do it. If it's not your job, then don't do it. If they force you to do it when you were a little kid and you really don't want to do it, then just go through the motions. Do the best you can, and then, you know, when, if it doesn't come out the way they like, then that's too bad for them. It, let them have the indigestion. Let them get indigestion for being frustrated when it doesn't work out the way they wanted it to. And you just be more like Alfred E. Newman, you know, just saying, hey, what, me worry? 
Do you get it? Now I think you got the idea. So, so remember, stress is eliciting something, and it can elicit patience, or it can elicit impatience. The the same stress. See that your child comes to you with a question. Your response can be impatience, or it can be patience. See what I mean? So, how you respond is very important. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention very quickly is that when we are resentful, we open to the door to out to becoming more sensitive to outside things. I'll never forget my mother and my stepfather went to San Francisco on vacation, and uh, while they were there, they had some kind of a huge something or other. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a huge argument. I, I'm not sure. But something really super negative occurred, and my mother was for sure resentful and angry. And I don't know if she was shocked or not, because I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, it made her very upset, very resentful. And guess what? She immediately got, became allergic. From that moment on, from that day on, she had allergies very bad allergies that she'd never had before. And I am 100, I'm absolutely certain that her huge resentment is the thing that somehow opened the door. And you know yourself that when you're negative, you know how things bother you, noises bother you, and people bother you, and things irritate you, and things exasperate you, and things get you down, and things worry you, and things depress you. And see, when you're negative. And could it be that it affects our body? Could it be that our bodies become more sensitive? Somehow the door is opened. Resentment opens the door to bad things to come in. But when you're not resentful, when you're lighthearted, cheerful, easygoing, then things kind of just roll off your back and don't bother you. You go out in the world and life is good. You see what I mean? So you have to watch out for resentment. It opens the door. And for whatever things, conditions that you have now, you know, any physical condition that you have now, or emotional condition or mental condition, all right, it somehow is there. Don't resent it. If you resent it or get angry at it or get angry at yourself or get angry at your body or get angry at the doctor or get angry at anybody, anything or the thing itself, then all it does is continue the negativity and doesn't permit the good to come in. You see, the good comes in from within. The good has God's inner, God's light, has the power to, to restore things, to mitigate things, to make things better, to somehow smooth things over. And when it does, then your body can recover probably naturally, can recover naturally. But resentment prevents this good from coming in and keeps everything negatively charged and keeps you sensitive and keeps you overreacting. And so the one response that you have to really watch out for is resentment. Watch out for that one. If you see it rising, just see it and let it go. If you see anger rising, just notice it. Watch it. Watch it. Let it diminish. Let it go. Stand back. Have a little separation between yourself and the resentment. A little separation between yourself and the anger. Just watch it. When negative ideas rise up, see, they're stressing you too, don't they? Negative ideas. They're stressing you. Just watch them. Don't react. Don't react. Don't react to anything. Just watch. And then you'll be able to not only begin to recover, regain your powers, not only that, but you'll be able to see the razor's edge between the natural and the unnatural, between eating just the right amount or eating too much, between working the right amount or working too much, or between working and, and working angrily and ambitiously. If you take the ambition out, if you take the resentment out, if you take the bad attitude out, see, you take all of those out, then everything left is just natural. And then you'll be able to either do it or not do it. Have it or not have it. See what I mean? Keep it or discard it based on common sense and your 
and your intuitive wisdom. And life becomes increasingly simple, and you begin to glide through life beautifully, effortlessly. And things don't bother you like they once did. And it's beautiful. <laughs>